you have your Bibles today, please take them and open with me to the great 13th chapter. The 13th chapter of the book of Genesis, of the book of beginnings. Genesis chapter 13, and we're going to pick up with part 3 of the series of messages that we have been preaching on the life and the ministry of Abraham, called the Father of the Faith. And I hope you've been with us for number one and number two, but if not, this is an independent message. You can just hook right up with us and just, and just join in. Glory to God. Genesis chapter 3 and the 14th verse. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look. And look from the place where thou art northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, innumerable, impossible to count. So that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then thy seed shall also be numbered. Arise and walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it. For I will give it to thee. And Abram moved his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar to the Lord. And the other day we read to you from chapter 15. I won't go back, but if you haven't read verses 1 to 7 of Genesis 15, then that's your stay at home work assignment. <laughs> that's your working at home assignment, and it'll do you a whole lot better than anything you'll ever do on Zoom. Now, God gave the promise. So why didn't Abraham, Abram as he was called then, his name had not been changed, why didn't he have the possession? God gave the promise, so shall thy seed be. You can't count it, but why didn't Abraham have the possession? God has said many things to you, and God has said many things to me, so why don't we have the possession? The purchase was done when Christ died for us on the cross. The promise is given in the word of God. So why don't we have our healing? Why don't we have our deliverance? Why don't we have our freedom? Why don't we have the provision? Why don't we have what God has promised? And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the subject that we're talking about, the subject of faith. The subject of faith. I was on... <laughs> A jet plane the other day. This is a crazy COVID story. And there was a pilot, a co-pilot, a flight attendant, and another flight attendant, myself, and three other passengers. I, you can't make this up. There was four crew members and four passengers. COVID is crazy. You know how I began my COVID journey? I was on a cruise. <laughs> we didn't know COVID was coming when we made the, the reservations. We couldn't get our money back, so we, we went ahead and did it before it broke. But the, the whole story broke while I was on a great ship in a great ocean. And in the middle of the night, God woke me up every morning at 3 o'clock in the morning. I mean, he woke me wide awake. I didn't even need coffee, but I drank coffee. And I walk the decks, 16 stories of that great cruise line on Celebrity Cruises. And I walked, and I paced, and I prayed in the Spirit, and the word of the Lord came unto me. And the word of the Lord said unto me, you preach like a prophet. You preach like a prophet. But now... I'm going to teach you how to pray like a prophet. I'm going to tell you something. 
I shouted so loud, glory be to God walking under the stars, walking under the moonlight in the Caribbean Sea. I shouted so loud, it's, it's amazing I didn't wake up every crew member and every passenger on that ship. I said, glory be to God, this is the breakthrough that I have been praying for, that I have been fasting for, that I have been longing for for years. And the Lord began to take me to this great story of Abraham, an old man, stricken in years, his wife dead. They cannot conceive children. She's barren. He sins and he goes through Hagar, the work of the flesh, but that was not God's will. It was not to come through Hagar. It was not to come through the work of the flesh. It had to be a work of the Spirit. There was no seed. There was no seed. Even though God promised that he would be the father of many nations, there was no seed. Can you relate to what I'm saying? Perhaps there's no seed in your life. Perhaps you're not seeing the fruition of what you believe for. Perhaps uh, the manifestation in the physical realm is not happening. Perhaps God has promised you so many things, but you're not feeling them. You're not having them. You're not possessing the land. The issue is in the realm and in the arena of faith. God said to me, on that ship, he took me to Ephesians chapter 5. I want you to take your Bible and look with me at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5. And I want you to look beginning in the 25th verse. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, and he gave himself for her that he might sanctify her and cleanse her. He's talking about what Jesus did for you on the cross. Glory to God, where every blessing flows through, where sanctification comes and healing comes and deliverance comes and true prosperity and leading and guidance comes, that he might cleanse her, sanctify her and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Now listen to verse 27 that he might present it to himself a glorious church, hallelujah, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. When we look at the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the visible church, I don't mean brick and mortar, I don't mean four walls, I don't mean that, but I mean the body of Christ, the spiritual body of Christ. When we look at the body of Christ on the earth today, we don't see this. We see lots of spots. We see lots of wrinkles. We see lots of stains. We see lots of sin, lots of carnality, lots of compromise. We see an apostasy instead of apostolic Christianity. And when we see all of this, there is no seed. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Well, right now, no. Noah had no convert as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. God has promised that we'll be a glorious church without spot and wrinkle. God has promised there'll be a great tribulation church, tribulation saints. God has promised through hundreds and hundreds of prophecies that there's going to be a great move of God, a great harvest of souls, a great outpouring of the Spirit before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Well, where is it? The fact of the matter is, the exact, diametric, total opposite has occurred. Instead of a great rapture, a great catching away, arpasio, we had a great falling away. Oh, we have numbers. We have churches of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 people, but they're not a one of them saved, even the pastor. Because they're religious, but they're not righteous. I said they're religious, but they're not righteous. They have tradition, but they don't have truth. Turn your Bible to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, and for your stay-at-home assignment, I, the professor assigns you that you read the entire fourth chapter of Romans. You'll thank me a hundred years from now in heaven, that you turned off the video games, 
that you turned off your idol phone, that you turned off the television, which is nothing but temptation, that you quit watching movies from Hollywood, and you studied the fourth chapter of Romans and learned how to develop holiness. You turned off movies and you learned the moving and the operation of the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 4, verse 3. What says the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. There is only one way to become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There's only one way to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. There is only one way to be saved by grace and through faith. It is by believing God. Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. He believed God even though he couldn't see it. He believed God even though he couldn't see the seed, even though the seed didn't exist. He couldn't feel in the seed. He couldn't touch the seed. He couldn't taste the seed. He couldn't smell the seed. But he believed it despite all the evidence to the contrary in the physical realm. And that's where God is trying to get every one of you watching me on IGTV right now. Every one of you watching me on Twitter, every one of you watching me on Facebook or YouTube or Google, he's trying to get you from the realm of the material, the sight realm, to the realm of the spirit, to the dimension of the spirit. Spirit, where we do as Paul said, and we walk by faith and not by sight. Your problem is you're led by websites instead of being led by the Spirit of God. You're led by applications instead of applying the Word of God. We are to walk by faith and not by sight. We're not to be moved by what we see or touch or taste or smell or feel. We are to be moved only by what we believe. Now, this happened with the great man Abraham. I want you to flip down. Like I said, I, I wish I could preach, take the time to preach the whole chapter, but let's go down to verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations. Again, there's the promise. There's the promise. But how do you get the possession? I've made thee the father of many nations before whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead. And here, here's the key. And this is shouting ground. God who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not <laughs> glory to God as though they were. Calls those things that be not as though they were. You, your body right now might be ravaged with sickness and disease. You may have COVID-19. You may be this close to going on a ventilator. You may have stage 4 cancer, and they've given you a month to live. You may have sugar diabetes. You may have heart disease. You may have had a heart attack. You may have hypertension. You may have so many issues. You may not know how you're going to pay your mortgage or, or pay your rent or buy your groceries or feed your kids this month. Are you listening to me? That's the situation in the natural. But in the spirit, God has already promised all of those needs be met. Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply, not maybe, not might, my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes you were healed. The Bible says you were healed. That means you are healed. So why are you going around talking that you're sick, talking that you're poor, talking that you're broke, talking. The Bible says that you always triumph in Christ Jesus. So why are you going around talking about how defeated and how downtrodden and how depressed you are? Amen. The Bible says you're a winner. So, so why, why are, do you have a frown like you're a loser? The Bible says we are champions in Jesus Christ who can bring down Goliath. So why are you talking like a loser? The Bible says you're healed. So why are you talking like you're sick? The Bible says, glory to God, that all of your needs are met. So why are you talking about how they're not met? Your talk has to line up with your walk. You have to speak and you have to confess the word of Almighty God. You have to say what God says about the situation, not what the world says, not what the devil says, not what some backslidden, lukewarm preacher says, but what does the word of God say about your situation? What does it say about your circumstance? He calls those things that be not as though they were. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now, I was going to save this for later, but I feel the Spirit of God leading me right now to just keep going in this chapter. And how many of you know we follow the leading and guidance of the Holy Ghost? We don't follow a, 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 a program. 
We don't follow notes. We don't follow a church bulletin. We don't follow a script. We believe in blessed interruptions around here. We believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And we sing, wherever he leads, I'll go. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Hallelujah. We sing, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. You better believe me, buddy. If you ever want to go to heaven, trust and obey. Fear God is the only way to get there. And this is what God taught Abram in his great journey. The Bible says in verse 18, against hope, he believed in hope. Somebody said, my situation's hopeless, Brother Mike. No, it's not. No, it's not. Abraham's situation seemed hopeless too. It wasn't. Lazarus' situation seemed hopeless too. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the lion's den, the fiery furnace. It seemed hopeless now, didn't it? But it wasn't. It wasn't. Against hope. Believed in hope. How about, don't believe in dope. Don't, don't believe in the dope of the world, but believe in hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Believe the word of God despite all the situations. If, if, if your whole world is surrounded by negativity, the positivity comes from the word of Almighty God. Glory to God. And this is the light of God. This is the will of God on your situation. Against hope, he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, the promise. Believing the promise is how you have the possession. Believing the promise of God through the purpose of God, which is the cross, is how you have the possession. Glory to God. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith. See, so many of y'all, Jesus said, O oh, ye of little faith. You're weak in faith. You're weak in faith. That's not the will of God. The will of God is not that you be weak in faith. The will of God is that you be strong in faith. Well, Brother Mike, how do I strengthen my faith? One way. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Your problem is you're here in the world. Your problem is you're here in the television. You're here in the internet. Amen. You're seeing screens. You are being bombarded by the idols, images, and icons and likenesses of this world. But you need to hear the word of God. You need to turn off the tech and turn on the truth. I said turn off the tech and turn on the truth. Glory to God. Being not weak in faith. See, it's a sin to doubt. It's a sin to have unbelief. It's a sin. You need to repent of that. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Now, now just think of that. He considered not his own body when he was 100 years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. Your problem is, on IGTV... Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Google, YouTube, wherever you're listening to me, you're considering what you see with your eyes. You're considering what you hear with your ears, your five physical senses, what you touch with your hands, what you taste with your tongue, what you smell with your nose, what you see, but you see, the Bible says that Abraham considered not his own body. You're dwelling on the negative. You're dwelling on what you can see. But God is trying to move you to the unseen realm, to the sightless realm, which is based on faith in the Word of God, regardless of what the senses say. Move from a sense realm into a spirit realm. That's how Abraham became the father of the faith. He staggered not verse 20 said, at the promise of God through unbelief. So many of you are doing that. Well, Brother Mike, I just don't think I can be healed. I'm just sick. I just don't think it's God's will to heal me. I don't think it's God's will to save my children. I, 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 it must be God's will that I have to keep puff, 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 puffing on the cigarette. It must be God's will that I have to keep shooting heroin in my veins. It must be God's will 
that I have to keep snorting lines of coke. No, it's not. No, it's not. The will of God is that you be saved. You be healed. You be delivered. You be sanctified. You be filled with the Holy Spirit and led by the Spirit. And, and every need financially, physically, mentally, domestically, and socially be met because Jesus died on the cross for your spirit, for your soul, and your body. Instead of staggering through unbelief and doubt and bad confessions, you, you need to do the other hand. You need to do the end of verse 20. You need to be strong in faith, giving glory to God. You need to be strong in faith. That means that it doesn't matter what the television says. It doesn't matter what the fake, false news media says. It doesn't matter the lies that the devil says. It doesn't matter what a backslidden preacher and a backslidden church and a backslidden congregation and the curses they try to speak on you. You speak the word of God no matter what. Come hell, come high water, you speak. Speak the word of God and you stand on this book. You stand on the promises of the Bible. Hallelujah. That is faith. Faith is speaking. The spirit of faith is speaking that which you believe. It is speaking that which you believe. Sanctify the tongue. Your tongue needs to quit lying. Your tongue needs to quit denying. Your, your tongue needs to quit gossiping and believe the gospel of grace. Your tongue needs to stop telling tall tales and tattle tales and start speaking only the truth. Forget about conspiracy theories, code, and learn the cross of Jesus Christ and speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. That's why we speak in tongues. Because when we speak in tongues, we are praying the perfect will of God. We are worshiping and glorifying God in the spirit and that builds up our ourself on our most holy faith. That's what the book of Jude the 20th verse says. Building up your faith. Building up yourself on your building up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh I feel this. I feel that this is ministering to some of you right now. You think your situation's hopeless. You don't think God has the power. Friend of mine, God has all power. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He is omniscient. He is El Shaddai. He is the God who is more than enough. Hallelujah. He is the most high God. You don't need some higher power in some 12 steps. You need the most high God who is the most high power in the world. You need three steps. The altar, the blood, and the cross. Hallelujah. 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 You don't need some rehabilitation program. You need to be regenerated, regenerated, regened, giving you new DNA, making you another man and a new creation in Christ Jesus, born again by the Spirit of Almighty God. And you know, this passage is absolutely phenomenal. You, you, you wouldn't think it could get any better, but look at verse 21. And being fully persuaded. <laughs> Some of y'all are just halfway persuaded. Some of y'all are just almost persuaded. But the word of God says, and being fully persuaded. How, 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 how do you get fully persuaded? You have to live in this word day and night. you got to turn off Zoom and get in Zechariah. You gotta turn off Zuckerberg and get in Zechariah. Are you are you listening to me? You gotta forget about that Jack and, and, and find Jesus. You have to live in this word. You gotta forget about Jeff Bezos and getting another delivery from Amazon and learn the blood of Jesus Christ, who is the deliverer of mankind. You gotta forget about Tim Cook and a new product from Apple, and you need to learn the cross of Jesus Christ, the word of Almighty God. That is how you get fully persuaded. You need to quit watching TV and start watching and praying. That is the all you got to get over the garbage, garbage in, garbage out. Get over the garbage of the world and learn the word. Hallelujah. This is the true word of faith. This is the true word of faith and this is how victory and deliverance and overcoming power can come to bear in your situation. And being fully persuaded. That what he had promised, are you ready to shout? He was able, oh glory to God, to perform. The performance comes when you believe the promise. When you are fully persuaded. When you are fully persuaded, 
that the one who made the promise is able to perform the promise, that's when the power of God comes to bear in your life. Friend, the, the, it's not the ability of God that's in question here. God did everything he's ever going to do about the devil, sin, sickness, fentanyl, opioids, Oxycontin, alcohol, tequila. God did everything about pornography and every bondage and captivity. He did everything about sickness and disease he's ever going to do when Jesus died for you on the cross. It's not the ability of God. Jesus said it's finished. He did his part. He defeated the devil. It's not the ability of God to do it. It's your ability to believe it. And the reason you don't believe it is because you're, you're on too many websites and applications, apps and, and sites, and you're watching too many programs, and you're just having the world inundate your brain. Well, you need to do what Romans 12 says and have your mind renewed by the word of Almighty God. Offer your body a living sacrifice sacrifice. Get into the Word so the Word can renew your mind and you can develop the mind of Christ and you can speak the Word of God. Hallelujah. Fully persuaded that what he had promised he's able to perform and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. This is the climax and the fulcrum of the Protestant Reformation, and it will be the heart and the soul of the new Reformation of Christianity that God Almighty has called me to begin. Hallelujah. The, I said the new Reformation of Christianity will come the same way the Protestant Reformation came. So, as I was on that ship, the Lord said, look up to the stars, just like Abraham did. And he said, I want you to start speaking the bride of Christ and the body of Christ into the earth. And the Lord showed me, he said, Michael, speak bride be, body be, kingdom of God be, harvest be, outpouring be, laborers be. And I began to speak forth that God would demonstrate his spirit manifest his spirit, demonstrate his gospel, and establish his kingdom on the earth. And he began to teach me how to pray as a prophet. Creative prayer occurred, and God is beginning to once again build a new church and a new work on the earth. I want you to look with me in your Bible to Galatians chapter 4 and verse 19. Isn't it good sometimes when I don't flip and swing from the chandeliers and thump my Bible <laughs> and be a holy roller and shout and dance and I just calm down to the best of my ability. This is calm for me. And I don't yell and holler and scream at the camera. And I'm just teaching you today. I'm not operating in the office of the evangelist right now. I'm operating in the office of the teacher and the pastor. Amen. Because some of y'all don't like it. <laughs> When I shout. <laughs> Some of y'all don't like it when I scream at you. Because you've been psychologized and psychoanalyzed so long that you, your mind and your ears are repelled when somebody yells at you. I only, I only yell at you because I care. I only yell at you so you won't go to hell. Are you listening to me? But anyway, Galatians 4 and the 19th verse. Galatians 4 and the 19th verse. My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. What a crazy statement. This is a church that was birthed in Holy Ghost revival, a great church of Paul. But the Hebrew False teachers and false prophets came along and said, well, you got to be circumcised. Amen. And you have to obey the Sabbath, and you have to obey the dietary laws, and you have to obey this and obey that. It wasn't talking about obeying the moral law, but it was talking about the ceremonial law, the dietary laws, the ritualistic laws, the circumcision laws, the sacrifice laws. And Paul said, he goes on in chapter 5 and says, if you're going to go down that way, you've fallen from grace. Christ is of no profit to you. 
And, and he, he goes to prayer intercession. Y'all need to learn intercession instead of investment. You need to learn intercession, intercede instead of planting seed. He said, my children of whom I travail in birth again. They lost their way. They fell from grace. They lost it. I travail in birth again till Christ be formed in you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what God had me do on the deck of that ship and this summer walking and praying on the beach constantly. The Lord has had me travail in the spirit until Christ be formed in you. Doesn't matter what I tweet, what I text, what I post, what I transmit. If what I preach is not backed up by intercessory prayer, then it does absolutely no good and it is complete religious exercise in vanity and Gnosticism. But every word that I preach and teach over the, the, these venues... Is for, it, it is backed by prayer. It is backed by the power of God. It is backed by intercession. It is backed by travail. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about how the things of God work. And I've got it in a little alliteration. Forgive me that I use the alliterations a lot, alliterations a lot, but they're effective. They're effective. We need to get back, A, to travail, B, to tears, C, to tarrying, Four, to testifying. And five, to taking, ho taking hold of the horns of the altar. That's where all you horny men and you horny women, let's be honest, need to be. You, instead of giving in to your lust, you need to learn how to love God. You need to come and take hold of the horns of the altar. The Pentecostal church, the great church at the turning of the 20th century at Azusa Street that knew the almighty power of God, they were characterized by these five T words. They were, they were, they were, they, they were characterized by travail. And travail hurts. It's birth. It, it's birth pangs. It's agony. Paul said to the Romans in Romans 8, he said, we, 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 we pray. Pray it in groans, groanings that cannot be uttered in intelligible speech. See, this is where God wants to get us. He wants to get us to a place of prayer. And sometimes prayer hurts. Sometimes prayer is not easy. Prayer is not convenient. It hurts. And then secondly, tears. The church used to cry, but today we have a no more tears gospel. We don't want to pray through at the altar till we get a breakthrough. We don't want to take hold of the horns of the altar. We don't want to lay prostrate on the floor before God, beating the ground, beating our breast, saying, woe unto me. We don't want to do that. We don't want to cry. We don't we want a Johnson and Johnson. We want a Johnson's baby shampoo, no more tears gospel. And then tarrying. Today, because of technology, we're in a hurry. And there's no humility left. Pride has destroyed all humility because tech makes you pride. And there's no patience left because tech destroys all pain. We want to right now, this minute, instant God, Instagram, instant gospel. We don't want to tear it. We, we don't want to do what Isaiah 40 said. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. Hallelujah. We don't want to do that. We don't want to wait. We want to be waited on. We want to have servants. We don't want to serve God. We want people to serve us. We don't want to serve God. We want servers. We don't want the master. We want modems. Hallelujah. Are you? We don't want prayer. We want programs and, 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 and procedures. We don't want the cross. We want code. We don't want Almighty God. We want algorithms and Apple and Amazon and, and AT&T. Testifying. Back in the day, you know, it says in, in Revelation 12, 11, they overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and what? The word of their testimony. The, but we don't have testimony meetings anymore. We don't have, well, the Lord did this for me. The Lord, no, no, no. No, because we too hurt too too much in a hurry to get home and, 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 and turn on the television and turn on the video games and turn on the laptop sitting in the devil's lap, Michael Dell. We're, 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 we're too in a hurry. We're, we're, we don't want to testify anymore. We want a, 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 just a just the preacher to preach and the choir to sing, everything scripted, everything in our church bulletin. No, 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 no. That's not what God wants us to do. We need to testify. And finally, five, take hold. Take hold of the horns of the altar. We used to have altar services. We used to have altar services and altar calls. And everybody would come up to the front and lay prostrate on the ground and beat their breast and cry unto Almighty God. But we don't do that anymore. Lord's Prayer. 
Matthew 6. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The Lord taught me on that ship to pray, Kingdom be! Will of God be! James 5, 7. God waits for the time of the early and the latter rain. The Lord said to me, pray, Rain be. Speak it into existence. Call Matthew 9. God said, pray ye the Lord that he send laborers into the harvest. The Lord said to me on the great ship on the great ocean, he said, laborers be. Call them into existence. They don't exist now. The bride doesn't exist, but say bride be. The body doesn't exist, but say body be. That is what Abraham did. He said, seed be. Seed be. He called those things that were not as though they are. God said, say, harvest be, laborers be, will of God be. Matthew 24, 14, you want to know why Jesus hasn't come? You want to know why there was no pre-tribulation rapture? Matthew 24, 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to every creature, and then the end shall come. We didn't do that. We preached a gospel, but we didn't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Kingdom be, but evangelist Mike Dial. Google evangelist Mike Dial. Google search for evangelist Mike Dial. Follow me on Twitter. At Evangelist M. Dial. This is truth. This is truth. And the kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom, is finally being preached. It means that Jesus is the king exclusively to the exclusion of all of the kings. It means that Jesus is Lord exclusively to the exclusion of all of the lords, including liquor, including lottery tickets, including lasciviousness, including licentiousness, including laying down with your lovers, including filthy lucre. Jesus is Lord. Lord to the exclusion of all other lords. Now, I'm going to close for today with this. As I was on that ship, I said, respectfully, I said, Father, tell me what's going on with the coronavirus. Because it was just beginning. It was just beginning in this country. And without hesitation, God took me to Romans chapter 1, and that's what I'm going to close with and end part 3 with today. Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it's written, the just shall live by faith. That's what I've been preaching. The just shall live by faith. Now verse 18. And here was God. God spoke a rhema word, a revelation knowledge event, into my spirit, he said, R.E. Coronavirus, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. God told me, this is my wrath. Now, at the time, there wasn't another preacher in the world. There was one of the preacher in the world that was preaching it was the wrath of God. To this day, I have yet to hear, other than myself and this other one other preacher, anyone say that COVID-19, the coronavirus, is the wrath of God. But it is, because God pours his wrath out on sin. And God said to me that day, he said, if you fear me, then you don't have to fear coronavirus. Faith, ladies and gentlemen, is the opposite of fear. Fear is in opposition to faith. There's good fear, which is the fear of God, but the rest of the time, 450 times, the Bible says don't fear. If you walk in around in fear, fear of the coronavirus, fear of COVID-19, then you're not walking in faith. If you're closing your church down because the government says to close the church down, if you don't have a choir because the government says... Listen to me, you can't have a choir. If you're social distancing, if you're not laying hands on the sick, touching the lepers, hallelujah, hugging people's neck, anointing them with oil, visiting them in the hospital and the prison because the government says, well, the government is wrong. God comes before the government. Faith in God comes before the laws of man because many times the laws of man are contrary to the moral law of of God. Hallelujah. We're going to stop there for today. I've been teaching you on the subject of faith. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, what things ever you desire, 
when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll have them. And that's what it comes down to. That's what Abraham, he had to get to that point to where he believed he received it before he saw it. He believed he had the manifestation of the seed and he acted accordingly. Glory. Be, and that's how, that's the key and the secret to your healing, to your prosperity, to your deliverance, to your leading, to your guidance, to the salvation of your family, to a new job, to, to whatever you need. It's through the cross, but you have to believe it, you have to receive it, and then you have to speak to yonder mountain. Mark eleven twenty three, 23. And say, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Rebuke the thing. And when you do that, Speak to yonder mountain and say, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and don't doubt in your heart. But believe that what you say will come to pass. You'll have whatsoever you say, provided what you say is the word and the will of God. In this sense, you can write your own ticket with God. In this sense, you, you, your spiritual destiny is in your... Now, don't go out there and start confessing there's something that's not the will of God or the word of God. Don't get involved in lust and greed and covetousness. Be content with what you have, but be sure that what you have is the will of God for you. And you know that by what the word says. Hey, amen. I've been blessed by this. I hope that uh, you'll come back tomorrow or next time together and we'll continue with part four and the spirit of God will just pour out like a river. And the rain of God will fall. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. And until next time, this is Evangelist Mike Dial telling you I love you. Jesus loves you. Follow me on Twitter at Evangelist M. Dial. Follow me on Instagram at Michael Wayne Dillon. Follow me on Facebook, Evangelist Mike Dial, Michael Wayne. Glory be to God forevermore. Go to YouTube. Watch all my videos. Just Google Evangelist Mike Dial and they'll pop up. Watch them, watch them, because the more you watch the Word, the more you hear the Word, the more faith will build up. That's why I preach. I preach, and every word that I preach is a faith-building word. It's a faith-building word. It's, and, then, and then when the faith builds up in your spirit, speak it out. It comes in your, you believe it with your heart first, and then you speak it with your mouth, and then you act like it's so, because faith is an action. Glory to God. And then you walk in love, because faith worketh by love, and then you forgive everybody who's done it. You even, if you're a Republican, you even forgive the Democrats. If you're a Democrat, you even forgive the Republicans. And we don't hold any bitterness. We don't hold any grudges. We don't hold any unforgiveness. Glory to God. We love our neighbor like ourself. Many of you, you don't even know your neighbor to love your neighbor. Hallelujah. And that's why the American dream has become the American nightmare. Love them. Forgive them. Pray for them. Pray for your enemies. Walk in love. That's how faith works. Praise God. I'll talk to you next time. This is Pastor Mike. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Amen.